Hello, welcome again to Bench Warmers, talking sports without any actual sports going on since March of 2020. Coming up on the show, lots of people with lots of time on their hands, lots of them getting up and working out for maybe the first time in a long time. We've got some advice coming up on how to get started, how to not hurt yourself in our chat with the Director of Sports Sciences at Avera Health. And big on the bison this week, Brian Sean is in to talk about what's going on at North Dakota State University, and he's ready for some ridicule as he reveals his NDSU Mount Rushmore, the top four bison athletes of the last 10 years. Well, speaking of top bison athletes, our big guest this week just finished up a fantastic college career at North Dakota State University. Derek Tusco was the Defensive Player of the Year last year in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Uh, he was taken in the NFL Draft this past spring by the Denver Broncos, and we tracked him down this week. Derek, how are you, and where are you at this time? I'm doing great. Uh, currently out in Denver. I came out here about a month ago. Kind of when, uh, when everything started opening up again, uh, got in with uh, the same crew at Land Up Performance, Coach Augie and, and his staff, uh, the, the same facility that I was at leading up to the Combine. So back out with them uh, and, and just getting ready for, for the season to start whenever that may be. All right, so do you have rookie training camp coming up in July or what kind of schedule is coming up for you? Yeah, so as of right now, uh, I'm, I'm just working out with, with the crew there. Uh, there's a handful of Broncos guys, uh, older guys that are, are training there. Um, so we're getting our workouts are running and lifting in. Uh, and then all, all of our meetings are done online right now. We, there's been talk that probably towards the end of July is when we'll bring in uh, rookies to do kind of a, a short rookie camp. And then vets will come in about a week after that towards the end of July. But uh, it, it's not in pen yet, so nothing's set in stone. So uh, a lot of play by, playing by ear, uh, but that's kind of what we're, we're looking at is towards the end of July we'll be getting into the facilities. So give us a little bit on your background. Were you born in the Twin Cities and then moved to South Dakota when you were a kid? Yeah, so I was born in Edina, uh, just a suburb of the cities, Twin Cities there. And then uh, I was really young, I think about two or so. Uh, moved to Warner, so uh, I don't know anything other than Warner, South Dakota, uh, but grew up in, the, in that small town there and uh, played multiple sports and then made my way up to Fargo, North Dakota. All right, so you ended up playing defensive end at North Dakota State, but I think you played everything except defensive end when you were in high school at Warner, right? Yeah, that, that's kind of what the territory that goes along with nine-man football is uh, you're able to play all over, so uh, it, it was a lot of fun growing up, just being able to play multiple positions. Uh, got to North Dakota, played defensive end, and then uh, now I'm playing outside linebacker. So uh, pretty similar, uh, but a little bit of a transition. Uh, but it, it's been going great, and I'm excited for the season to start and actually get, get pads on again. So you and your brother, Jared, played high school football together at Warner. Jared went on before you to play at North Dakota State, so he was obviously a factor. But what else got you to North Dakota State? Their winning culture, uh, just there was something about North Dakota State that was different from every other school that I was looking at. Uh, I mean, a Division One program that was winning national champion, national championships year after year, uh, that, that was going to be a hard, hard uh, team to, to pass up. So that was definitely one of the big factors was, was just their, their winning program. Uh, another one is, is Coach Kramer, the strength conditioning coach there. Just hearing what he did in the weight room uh, and, and getting guys prepared on the field, I, I felt like that would be huge for me developmentally. Uh, and that was an, another huge factor. And it's crazy. You hear a lot from uh, a lot of that from guys like yourself, how the strength coach is such a big influence. I truly think that they're the most important uh, part of the staff mm -hmm. just because you spend more time with, with your strength coach than you do with any, any position coach. Or anything like that because you're, you're with them uh, pretty much all year round. All right, Denver has some great outside linebackers right now, Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. It's got to be awesome to be in the same room and get to learn from them uh, right now, but you got to be kind of cool about doing it, right? Exactly. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta pinch yourself and, and make sure it's real, but then you can't, you can't get, get all starstruck and stuff <laughs> now, that, now that I'm here. So. <laughs> all right, you were academic 
all Missouri Valley for five years at North Dakota State and then got your degree in what? Crop and weed science. Okay. Uh, so it, it's agronomy. Everybody hears that and the first thing they, they think of is, oh my gosh, he, he studied in, in weed sciences. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> it's, it's not what everybody thinks or expects. It's, it's a lot different. So uh, it definitely, that interest came from, from growing up on a farm. Uh, wanting to eventually maybe one day go back and do all the agronomy work, all the crop scouting for, for the farm. So, All right, thanks a lot, Derek. Hope the next few months go well for you. Looking forward to seeing you out there with the Broncos coming up this fall. Yeah, I appreciate it. Stay safe. All right, coming up next, working out without wiping yourself out. we got some words of wisdom for you weekend workout warriors coming up next. Welcome back. It's nice out. You want to be active, but maybe don't know where to begin or know what workout might be best for you. Our Elena Lanson caught up with Avera's Director of Sports Sciences, Derek Furley, who shared some tips on what to try, how long the workout should last, and how to maximize the benefits after your workout. Thanks so much for chatting with us today. Um, some of us may have spent some extra time on the couch this spring. So what, in your best opinion, your advice, um, what is the best way to choose a workout that's gonna get us active, get us back on our feet and get us ready um, for someone who might have not worked out in a couple months? Well, one of the first things I'd say is now that it's nice outside, let's definitely take advantage of the opportunity and get outside to do something that um, we all enjoy, whether that's uh, either just walking or, or biking, maybe it's rollerblading, uh, might be even running if that's um, uh, your game. But um, uh, definitely choose something that, uh, if you haven't been, been real active over the past couple of months, um, choose something that you can kind of ease into. And easing into it, low impact workouts are great. Uh, do you have an example of that? Uh, absolutely. Well, certainly um, uh, cycling uh, would be an example of a low impact um, workout, um, rollerblading, uh, you, if you're indoors, obviously you can do um, something like an elliptical. But um, I, with with this time of the year, I just really, I really recommend getting out on your bike and taking advantage of the uh, the, the bike paths here in Sioux Falls. Getting some sunshine like we're yeah, seeing today. Yeah. Um, would you put a time limit on those early workouts? Um, well, just going off of some of the guidelines for um, uh, for getting the most out of a, a workout session, you really should do something for at least 30 to say 40 minutes probably uh, four to five times a week. Um, and that's if it's low intensity. Now, if you're doing something that's a little bit higher intensity, you can maybe just go two or three times a week, oh, for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. But uh, it's, um, it's kind of varying the intensity and the duration in order to really achieve what you want to achieve. Okay, noted. So my workouts need to go a little bit longer. <laughs> yes, if, you, if you're not going to uh, be all that intense, you'll, you'll want to carry it out a little bit longer so that you get the benefit. Um, and for some of these early workouts, a lot of people will jump into them and do, I mean, maybe seven a week. What is your key <laughs> to not burning out and to keep at it for multiple weeks in a row? My biggest uh, recommendation to not burn out would be to try to vary your workout. Um, uh, and so maybe you do like to run and maybe cycle and who knows, maybe even swim. And, and so uh, I would recommend um, maybe trying to do one or two of those types of workouts each week. Uh, so if you're going to say you're going to work out five days a week, maybe cycle two or three times and maybe run once, maybe swim once, just to get that nice uh, variety in, in, uh, in what you're doing. And while you're doing this, the recovery process is super important. Uh, what would you recommend? Stretching, anything that you need to do directly after and then maybe a couple hours after? Absolutely. Well, uh, number one, um, static stretching where you, where you where you stretch and then hold that stretch, uh, that should be done uh, after the workout. It really shouldn't be done so much prior to the workout. Um, and, uh, and nutrition wise, you, uh, following your workout, you wanna be sure that you get some carbohydrate and some protein, um, something that uh, uh, replaces what you've burned off. Now, if you have access to some of the, some of the higher tech stuff, you can certainly do the, the compression boots, the compression socks. Um, and, and some people do have that at their home, but otherwise you may have to go to a place like ours or, or elsewhere in the community to get that. And if you could pick one thing, you're at the store, one thing to get started to buy, what would you get? Um, I would definitely have a, a good pair of shoes. I mean, if you don't have a, a, a properly fitting pair of shoes and, 
and one that's really meant for your, uh, say, your running style, if that's what you're going to do, or even walking, um, you can really end up having a miserable experience if you don't have a really decently fitting shoe. So you want to probably spend some time with a, with a shoe expert at one of the local um, places in town, and they can definitely help you out. Awesome. My yeah. excuse for going shopping. <laughs> Thanks so much. Really appreciate the time. Oh, you're welcome. Coming up next, checking in with our man at North Dakota State University, Brian Sean, talking some dirt track racing and, of course, some bison football. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. Brian Sean is our man for Midco in Fargo, North Dakota, covering the Bison at North Dakota State University. And we bring him in here now. Be good to see you, my man. First of yeah. all, how you doing? Yeah. I'm doing good. It's good to be on the set, and it's good to yeah. talk to other human beings again. <laughs> exactly. All right. Football, basketball, whatever it's been at NDSU, it's been a pretty good gig following national champions and NCAA tournament qualifiers at NDSU in the last five or six years, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been really fun. I mean, when you got teams qualifying for the NCAA tournament in hoops uh, and, and some of the successes they've had there, and then, you know, with football going to Frisco eight of the last nine years and winning titles, uh, you know, you're lucky if you get to do that once or twice and to do it eight times and be there for all eight of those championships has been a, a pretty special deal. And then you, you see so many great players come and go too. And I think that's the other part of it is to see where they were and where they, where they are now. Some are still playing, some are doing other things, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun to witness that uh, over the last decade. And, you know, and to think the, the last loss I called for an NDSU football game, I was still in my 30s. It was in Brookings in 2017, so it's been a while. Right. We'll get to more of that here in a second. But first, talk about some racing stuff first. You've always been a racing fan. Dirt track racing, or when did you start uh, falling in love with racing? You know, that, that goes to my grandfather. My grandfather started taking me to dirt tracks in Wisconsin at Wilmot Speedway um, in the southern part of Wisconsin. He took me up to Beaver Dam a couple times, and then he was the first one to take me to Knoxville, Iowa for the Nationals. So when I was a kid growing up, I just loved sprint cars. Uh, he was really cool about taking me every time I used to go out and visit him. And that just kind of continued. That passion continued as I got older and started going on my own. And uh, still, still loving it and still love being a part of it and being around uh, that sport. And some people probably get surprised by that a little bit, but I still love uh, learning about it and learning about the cars and, and meeting the drivers. People around that sport are so, so down to earth, and I think that's, that's part of the fun too. Yeah. Why would they be surprised that you're, that you're a dirt track fan? I don't know. I just think sometimes people think it's, you know, not for, for someone like me. It's like, wow, you're really a big racing fan. Yeah. They're just surprised that, you know, you're a guy that, uh, that, that does what you do and you're just so into it and so passionate about it, but uh, it's fun. I just, I just love it. And covering it for uh, Midco Motorsports here on Midco Sports Network as well. All right, NDSU football, become nationally known for winning uh, FCS national championships, like you said. And I'm asking this for about 10,000 other people. Any end in sight to the Bison domination? <laughs> you know, they find the right kids that that come in and i think the biggest thing they've done tom is they followed northern iowa's blueprint which is building on the offensive and defensive lines you can have great skill kids but if you can't hold your own in the trenches from year to year and win the battle and get the push up front on the offensive and defensive lines the skill really doesn't matter and that's what they've done a good job is developing these kids throughout the course a four to five years to get them where they are. And not all of them come in and make impacts right away. But over the course of their career, Derek Tusk is a really good example. You know, he, he starts off small town Warner, North Dakota kid, gradually, gradually improves, improves. By the junior year, he's, he's an impact guy. And by the senior year, he's a super impact guy. And there's a lot of stories like that about how they're able to bring these kids in predominantly from the Midwest and build them up and make them really good football players. Yeah, that hits it right on the head that it is one in the trenches, uh, game in and game out for North Dakota State. Are there signs of life on campus in Fargo right now at NDSU for player workouts? Is that still a couple of weeks away to get everything really going for not only football, but for fall sports? You know, they were able to get football players back for voluntary workouts on June 1st and put together a protocol to have a certain amount of players in the facility at one time and, and continued that throughout the course of the day. And then they brought back volleyball and volley, uh, and soccer uh, a week later and then men's and women's basketball on June 15th. So they phased everything in. 
uh, trying to get everybody back in the groove again. And again, that's just workouts. They're not able to meet with coaches or anything until July, but it's at least a sign of activity, uh, of, of kids still doing right. things, still being with their teammates, still being on campus. And I think a lot of them were itching for that just because of the isolation, not being around their friends and teammates for that period of time, I think has been really good. And I think, you know, their workout situation is, is, is unique, obviously, with Jim Kramer, who's done such a good job there over the years. And all of them came back across the board and, and some had really increased uh, their muscle tone, some needed more work. And I think that's, that's part of the challenge of this off season as well. Yeah, just keep crossing our fingers on that it's going to keep progressing here in the next two months and we're going to have some fall sports seasons. But mm -hmm. uh, one last end issue football question. You talked about you can have great skill players and issues got one at quarterback Trey Lance. Uh, one of the most incredible seasons we've seen in college football last year is getting a lot of it's not hype because of what he did last year, but the love that he's getting from NFL scouts right now. Where does he rank uh, compared to these recent history uh, quarterbacks at NDSU? <laughs> I, you know, to, to, to be there in Frisco when he won the Peyton Award as a freshman and was the first to do that, and when you look at the numbers and you see the, the 28 touchdowns, the zero interceptions, the completion percentage, the efficiency, the toughness, and just the poise, I think, was the biggest thing he showed in the pocket. He never really got rattled back there. I think that was the one thing that really stands out to all these draft experts. I didn't anticipate it was going to blow up like it did this offseason where all these people that were like, look at, started finally watching tape of this, this kid and, and watching Trey, and, and he's only 20 years old, he just turned 20 like last month. And to think about where he is now, it, it's really been something to, to watch, but based on his progression, Tom, if he does what he did this year, I mean, I think the sky is the limit for what, it could, what could happen to him. And the last two guys have been drafted between Carson and Easton, and he very well could be uh, the next one. And whether or not that's next year remains to be seen. It would sure be something if we had an FCS quarterback leave after their sophomore yeah, year, but yeah. it certainly is possible. All right, Trey Lance is not on the list that we have coming up next, but when we come back, Brian has his NDSU Mount Rushmore, the top four student athletes from North Coast State in the last 10 years. Welcome back. Every week we are asking our Midco people to put together a short list of the greatest athletes at the school that they cover. And uh, this is just in the last 10 years. We limited it to the last decade and it's based mostly on what they did in their college career. And North Dakota State is up this week with Brian Sean and these are not easy choices B. And that little caveat about what they did at North Dakota State and not necessarily what they did in a pro career that might have followed that. That leads us into our first guy here who was a great quarterback at NDSU whose name is not Carson Wentz. Yeah, I think everybody expects Carson Wentz to be top on that list, but Carson only had 23 career starts and obviously he's special what he did, but Easton Stick, 88 career touchdown passes, number one in school history, 8,700 career passing yards, number one in school history, 129 total touchdowns responsible for, number one in school history, 49 wins, all-time winningest quarterback in FCS history, and I think sometimes gets undervalued because of who he came after. But Easton was a winner. The kid won a couple of national titles. He stepped in as a redshirt freshman to Tom and went 8-0 when Carson Wentz got hurt. So those are the reasons I put him on top of this list. All right, a track guy up next. And unfortunately, he didn't get a shot at the Summer Olympics that got postponed this summer, but uh, Peyton not at all. Peyton Otterdahl, just the second man ever to win the weight throw and also uh, a shot throw at uh, the indoor championships in the NCAA. The first NDSU man to win an individual national championship and was a multi-time All-American between the discus and shot. Uh, the way that guy developed, he set an all-time collegiate mark at the Summit League uh, championships on February 23rd, throwing 71 feet. Uh, a little over 71 feet. So that's why Peyton Otterdahl, to me, stands above the rest. And, and certainly he's got a pro career ahead of him as well after setting a pretty high bar in DSU. All right, up next, a golfer, Amy Anderson. Amy Anderson Olson. I don't know what she goes by right now, but was a fantastic player for the Bison in her day. Yeah, that, this one ages me a little bit, Tom, because I remember covering her winning Fargo Moorhead women's all city tournaments when she was 13 years yeah. old. So the fact that now she's like married and is like an adult is kind of hard for me to fathom sometimes. But, you know, 20 career individual titles and she set uh, a new NCAA record breaking the mark of 17 held by Julie Inkster, who had, you know, a tremendous career on the LPGA tour. So Amy Anderson, who was, again, a homeschooled kid, 
Not a lot of people knew about her. All of a sudden she comes to a place like North Dakota State where obviously we don't have a ton of great weather around Fargo to play all year round. And for her to do what she did, and certainly beyond her collegiate career, has been really fun to watch. And I think that's why she deserves to be on there. All right, and the last guy is a hoops guy. And this is from a great era of NDSU basketball. Not just on his team alone with uh, the guys that he played with, but Lawrence Alexander gets the nod here. Yeah, and another guy I think that sometimes gets undervalued, 131 career starts at NDSU, most in program history, fourth all-time leading scorer, had 28 points against Oklahoma in the Bison's first ever tournament win, uh, you know, back in 2014, loses three starters off that team, comes back in 2015, and was the Summit League Player of the Year and led the Bison back to the NCAA tournament after beating South Dakota State, uh, and then played Gonzaga, was very competitive with Gonzaga in that game. So, you know, to me, L.A. stands out as one of those guys that uh, w was just tough as nails, started every game, was super durable, and uh, to me, on the biggest stages, always stepped up the most. So to me, when you look at his numbers and what he was able to accomplish uh, over the course of his career, yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well-deserved, and uh, feel free to fight with Brian on social media <laughs> about any of these uh, selections, but it's a tough call. These are not easy uh, to do, to pick even from the last 10 years. But all right, B, thanks a lot, buddy. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it, Tommy, thanks. All right, we'll be right back. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Our thanks this week to Derek Tuska and Brian Sean. And coming up next week, David Brown with his NSIC Mount Rushmore, the top four athletes in the entire Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference from the last 10 years. We'll see you next week on Bench Warmers.